Hey, it's Andrew here from Home Theatre Engineering. Uh, we're pretty excited because we've got uh, two special packages here. One is the BenQ W5700 projector, which has literally arrived 10 minutes ago. And the other special package is Matt from BenQ. <laughs> so uh, say hi to uh, Matt. And of course, we've got Enzo from Home Theatre Engineering. Um, so the timing's really, really perfect because not only do we get a chance to unbox this beast, but we get some inside information from the guys who were involved in really bringing this thing um, to us in terms of getting it to market and making it available and, and the features inside. So uh, I might start unboxing this thing, and if you want to talk a bit about some of the features of this, and then, um, yeah. So I'll we can certainly do that. Tell, like tell, you, tell us a little bit about like it. Like you, uh, this is my first unboxing as well. I've been uh, playing around with these things now for about three months, and uh, I haven't been lucky enough to be present for an unboxing. I saw my first unboxing on YouTube yesterday, uh, but this is the first one I've actually been present for. So for anyone who doesn't know, this is our first really good 4K projector um, uh, for BenQ, and uh, it's the first uh, BenQ projector that in my opinion, has got uh, good blacks uh, for the best part of 10 years. Anyone who knows, previously we had a model called the W5000 back in 2008, 2009. This is back to those black levels again. Well, I'm going to stop talking for a minute. I'm going to let you talk about what's in the box. Right. So, Enzo, what have we got? The usual instructions. We've but it's an instruction tables. manual, a full instruction a manual. Full. <laughs> One that you can read. You don't well, have to put it into a disk well, drive or download it. I think it's got both, but uh, we, actually, yeah, we, we actually included a little booklet with it. But oh, we're men, we don't read instructions. Man, yeah. <laughs> Destructions. <laughs> so yes, obviously a nice little remote. Is we'll it backlit? Some... Uh, it is backlit, backlit yeah, yep. the remote's backlit. backlit. Uh, it's got no batteries in at the moment. Yep. We'll whack those batteries in. Yeah. All right. well, Interesting that it's backlit. black as well though. Um, yep. Keeping in the theme of home theatre and hiding things away. Got uh, a CD for people who still have CDs. <laughs> That's pretty for cool. people who have those, yeah. We should include a uh, uh, USB stick. Uh, user manual, uh, Adobe Reader. Oh, nice. An addendum. Yes. This is pretty cool. What have we got in here? Uh, Picture modes and correcting keystone. I didn't say that. Nobody uses keystone, right? You it's don't evil. do it. Keystone's Actually, we'll do a video. Do we'll do a video on that because uh, I'd like to show you guys what <laughs> keystone does to an image. It's unbelievable. Um, so we'll get that happening. And uh, here's the instruction manual. Wow. Okay. It's in multi languages. So if you read Chinese or uh, Mandarin or French, it's probably in that as well. Fantastic. Yep. All right. What else have we got? On the Something that I like there. is that. Oh. Yeah. Want to the have calibration report. Individual calibration report. Oh, this I've got to see. <laughs> Come on. Andrew's an ISF calibrator, so he has been hanging out for this. So this is individual for each projector off the correct. bench, correct? This yep. ISF calibrator yep. needs its glasses. <laughs> so as these projectors uh, come off the production line, before they get boxed up, uh, they're run through a, an individual <laughs> testing process. So we're, we're actually testing the projector to make sure it works, obviously. Uh, but the worst thing that could possibly happen is that you get the projector home and it doesn't work out of yep. the box. Uh, so we're negating that risk. But at the same time, we're also doing a, a colour calibration test. So it's not calibrated to your room uh, in in the sense that you can plug it in and it'll just be calibrated to your room. That's what you guys are for. Yeah. Um, but what we are doing is saying that uh, from uh, a white point or from a light point, it meets these colour calibrations. So yeah. it, uh, this particular projector is um, not, sorry, it's 100% uh, Rec 709 out of the box and also 100% Rec, uh, uh, sorry, BT 2020 out of yeah. the box as well, or Rec 2020 out of the box. Um, so I'm hoping that that makes sense to you because no, me... it does. So um, look, we'll we'll um, we'll pop this up as a document anyway. But what we're looking at here are the uh, the specs of the projector. Um, there is uh, a measured uh, condition report at the top here. Um, so uh, it actually tells you what they used to um, to measure it with, and what picture mode it was measured in. So uh, that's pretty cool. So. Um, below that, I don't know if you can, hopefully you guys can see this, on the left hand side, this is the colour space, so this one here um, is the, uh, this is CIE uh, 1931, um, this is, uh, I'm just trying to see what we've got, this is the, uh, basically the full colour gamut, and then within this are triangles which I, I'm still trying to read the uh, telltale on, but I believe we've got uh, DCI, P3 colour space, and I think the other one represents Rex 709. Um, 
Seems a little bit big for Rec. 709, but I'll, I'll have a really good look at this uh, later on. And on the left is our Color Gamma. Um, so that's reference to a Gamma of 2.2. For a really black room, that would be a Gamma of 2.4, so we'd probably look at modifying that a little bit. But uh, that's kind of cool. Mm. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a projector come with a calibration report. No. So, and they're all also... individualised to each projector, so it actually has the serial number of your projector uh, and the date it was tested and who tested it. Do you well. know how, now, I'm curious as to how it's tested. Is it tested against a screen or...? No, I believe, I, I haven't seen it done, but my understanding is it's tested against, there's a, a machine that they shine the light into. Right. So they literally power the projector up, put the lens directly in front of it, it measures it, produces a calibration report, uh, they enter the details of the projector, they scan it in, uh, the serial number, etc. of the projector, and it generates a, a page which is then put with the projector and then it's boxed up. Very cool. So, yeah. so the, 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 uh, the projector itself is calibrated, and then all we would have to do is basically tune it to the room and the screen. Correct. So that's, that's exactly right. And is that, is that something that they've done through ISF? Because I noticed ISF on the box, or is that... I'm sure Joel had a hand in getting the system set up. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how, yeah. they, how they set it up. Or what, the, so the calibration, I understand, is just calibrating to the correct color, color um, yeah, yeah. source of you know, red, green, blue. Yeah. Um, but of course, when you put it into a room, uh, as I was saying earlier, like yeah, a different. room like we're in now where it's nice and black with a really white screen, which is probably you know, 1.1, 1.2 gain, yeah. uh, it's going to be different to a room where you've got a gray walls with a white ceiling with a, a one, gain one gain screen. Or, or a woven like screen that. where a lot of light passes through. Exactly. Yeah. Spot on. All right. So, so there's also a power cable in there. Um, nice and long. It's about two metres long, um, yeah, nice. which is good. Makes it handy when you want to test it without having to yeah. um, run extension leads, etc. Yeah. All right. Do the throwing away thing. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> right. What else have we got? Uh, that should be it. There may be, be a little phone. warranty card in there somewhere. Right. Let's see. You grab that side. Yep. There you go. And out we come. Try not to drop it the first time. Yep. There, there we go. go. Brilliant. There you Thank go. Thank you very much. Put that end. And here we go. So your first unboxing. My first unboxing. As I said, I saw my very first unboxing on YouTube last night. Okay. And having seen about five or six of these installed in stores, um, but never actually pulling one out of a box myself. The first, a lot of comments I've read, very light. Yep. And um, very light. Yeah, it's not a heavy projector. At all. It's well presented. There's a nice little gold 4K HDR badge on it, which is kind of cool. Um, manual controls for your lens shift. And let's have a look at the back. So on the front here, actually, what have we got? Obviously, I'm assuming we've got the vents, IR port. We've got a lens cap at the moment, adjustable legs on the bottom. And let's spin it around a bit. Your indicator lamps here, power, temp, and lamp. That's pretty cool. And then at the back, there we go. What have we got? So we've got power in, we've got LAN connection, um, we've got an optical connector yeah. there. So what's, the, what's the optical yeah. connector for? So in this unboxing that I saw last night, it was one of those situations where I hadn't had a chance to do the training mm -hmm. with them yet. Um, so the uh, this projector actually has a built-in, and we'll get to it as we move across, but it's got a built-in media player mm -hmm. um, with a lot of codecs already in it. So you can play videos and stuff directly off USB. The problem is how do you get sound back out of the projector. So what we've done is we've included both a 3.5mm headphone socket yep. and an optical socket. So yeah. if you've got a video that you've legally obtained yeah. and uh, it has a 5.1 soundtrack, it'll send the sound back yeah. from the projector back to your amplifier. And this will be popular for a lot of people that are wanting to do outdoor cinemas. Correct. Because a lot of people go, how do we get sound? How do yeah. we do it so easily? So this is pretty, yeah. so you've got sound pretty return cool. um, yeah. via, via SPDIF yes. and via your audio out as well. So yeah. that's very cool. Um, so your media reader port and a 2.5 amp USB port, which is really cool as well. If you want to run, say, a Chromecast or something like that, you yeah. need a high power output. Yep. Perfect. Done. Yep, I actually had a problem just now. I've just come back from a job where we're putting cooling fans in, and the um, the USB couldn't. It's the you know they're supposed to be able to run four fans in, yes. and it's like turn the fourth fan on, and everything just went. <laughs> so, what else have we got? Uh, Media reader RS two three two, which is cool. Yep, for control. Yep, um, we've got a service USB port, which I assume is for uh, only people who should be fiddling. Correct. Right. Spot on. Uh, and I like this. None of this rubbish. Um, HDCP 2.2 only in HDMI 1. We've got 
on both H- HDCP yeah. 2.2 in both, so you can't yeah. screw that up. Well, no, you would think not. <laughs> no, so so that's pretty cool. It's the first of our projectors in this range to have that as yeah. well, by the way. Everything else we do is that uh, HDCP 1 and 2.2. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one is the first. But that is two. a massive issue, because on the forums, a lot of people go, my projector doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. Or it's not, <laughs> it's not doing, it. yeah, Move and they across. don't realise that only one of them is. Correct. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I can't get HDR. <laughs> All right, and obviously we've got hey, there's an on button yeah. and a set of controls. So we've got up, down, left, right arrow. You've got the OK in the middle, menu, back, uh, source, and mode. So yeah. everything you can do with the remote control, you can do it from the uh, projector itself the as well. Projector. Yeah, you know, one thing that's very important I've noticed: great that it's not deep. So yeah. we can get it to the close to the back of the wall as possible in some rooms. Yeah. Mm. So the footprint is designed. I mean, the, a couple of the key features of this particular product was it's the first time in a while we've had a reasonable zoom as well. Traditionally, BenQ projectors tend to be either short throw, relatively short throw, or long throw projectors. Yeah. And they don't have a large zoom capability. Mm. Um, this is the first projector that we've put out for a while, with the exception of going to our higher end yeah. ones where we've got a good zoom. This is a 1.6 time zoom. Mm. Uh, it's also the very first projector that we've ever built that has got a lens cover or, or a lens uh, dust cover mm. built into the projector so this little thing here that you see on the yeah. front is actually when you mount the projector upside down as most people do this is to stop the dust settling on the lens so mm. people have to get up and clean the lenses yep. no longer any need to do that the dust won't settle on the lens anymore yep. it will nice stop design. it getting in front of right. it yep. a couple of little things that are nice here center line yep um which i, I know it's probably obvious but, thing, but uh you know the number of jobs we go to where the projectors are mounted off center and hopefully if nothing else this is a prompt for the guy installing it um also got a center point if you notice there as well center of gravity which yep. is very cool mm. um and also you've even labeled the fact that these are m4 8l um, uh, screw uh, tops, screw holes, so yeah. or bolt holes, which is really nice as well. We prefer people don't screw too far through them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, um, no, that that's a lot of attention to detail. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah that, that's really nice. So, um, all right, uh, what else can you tell us about this? Now, I guess one of the questions that I get from people because we're talking about this, and um, Enzo and I are really rap because at the moment one of only two distributors in Western Australia, uh, sorry. Uh, um, retailers Correct. in Western Australia for this, so thank you for that. Um, but uh, when we're talking to people, of course, this is a DLP projector. Yep. And what does everybody say when you talk to them about DLP? The, the, the famous catch cries, RBE, what about the rainbow, rainbow effect? effect. Yeah. Tell us about this in <coughs> terms of rainbow effect. So uh, having been personally selling BenQs for the best part of 15 years, mm -hmm. uh, and having worked for BenQ for the best part of the last six, um, it's always the catch cry. Well, I can always see the rainbow effect. You know, the rainbow effect actually uh, really only affects less than 0.1% of the Australian population. But because yeah. it is a, it's a, it's a thing that, that comes with these projectors, yeah. um, with DLP projectors, uh, people talk about it. And, and it seems to be the, the catch cry. One of the things that's happened over the last few years, is we've, we've now got six-speed colour wheels in our projectors, yep. um, which means the, the uh, red-green blue, red, blue wheel that produces the colour is moving a lot faster than it used to. Um, but we're also putting into these projectors now into our entire new range, uh, motion enhancing and motion smoothing. Those two things combined seem to have almost alleviated it entirely. So people, uh, retailers, for example, who in the past would shy away from the technology, uh, now we put one of these in and people who have always said, oh, I can see it, now say, what rainbow effect? Yeah. I mean, and, and the thing is, you know, um, DLP gets a, a, an interesting rap. But if you look at the high end stuff, the barcodes, they're DLP. Yeah, spot mm. on. You know, so when you go to cinemas, they're DLP, yeah, generally speaking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, um, uh, on some of the big projectors that I've worked on, they are all the Texas Instrument, mm. you know, um, barcode chips. So, yeah, yeah. Well, m more 4K projectors are sold around the world by BenQ than any other brand. We're the number one 4K brand globally. Now, we sell a lot, a lot Real cheaper. Real 4K. True 4K projectors. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we sell more true 4K. Uh, projectors in any other brand right. and the reason we do those we obviously sell the cheaper end of the market yeah um, we also have expensive products as well but the cheaper end of the market is where we seem to to perform best in yep. um, the when you're doing that and, and more people are seeing it there's obviously a reason that we sell more of those projectors without casting dispersions i mean it's it's a market people have to have a reason to market their product you know why is one brand better than the other why is a mercedes better than a uh, a Porsche or better than a um, 
uh, a BMW. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their points of difference. Yeah. Um, the way we do it is different to the way that, say, an Epson does it or yeah. a Sony does it. We all have different ways of achieving the same end result. Mm -hmm. um, it's just about the technology. It's about the way that we do it. It's the way that people perceive it as mm -hmm. well. One of the nice things about this uh, that I imagine, and what we'll be doing is we'll pop up a, a video that will follow immediately on this because uh, we're going to plug this in, we're going to fire it up, and uh, we're going to uh, do um, an out-of-the-box calibration on it. Um, so we'll see how it performs literally out of the box, and we'll, we'll record that for you, and uh, we'll publish those results. And then, um, if necessary, I'll give it a tweak and uh, pull the thing into line, if that needs that at all. A um, couple of other things I've noticed on the front, we've got the zoom, it's actually a very smooth yeah. control, it's really, it's not clunky and it doesn't feel like it's going to fall off, which is nice, and uh, and the focus as well, um, mm. if you have a, it's very fluid. So, so well, that's, that's one really of the problems nice. with the old school projectors, you used to always, to try and get it, you used to go very too clunky. far, yeah. too, too, yeah, so. And the thing would jump. Around, yeah, jump so. around. A lot of the cheaper brands as well. So there's a lot of people who play in this DLP space. So there's mm. other brands out there. Sure. Um, we use all glass lenses in our array. So every single, even our cheapest projectors still use glass, glass. inside of yeah. it. The mechanisms that we use to put uh, the, the, the image from inside the projector up onto your screen never really differs. It's always good quality. It's always built for purpose. Yeah. So if we've got a 4K projector, we've got a 4K ar array to put in that place. And it's all about getting the best image quality from inside on that chip to that screen mm, yeah all right well I'm, I'm you know one of the things i like about the bank is also the lack of convergence issues mm. so so that's mm. that's cool as well um I, I think um the other thing is um and look every product has its pros and its cons and i'm really excited about this because i think this is going to be a really great um entry level pro for projector for people who wanted to get into the dci color space so that's your your, your expanded color space mm -hmm. and true 4k um, I really am keen to see this with an anamorphic lens. Um, there's a lot of um, pros, I think, f for this product. Uh, if there were any downsides, I guess one of the questions that we get asked is anamorphic zoom. So zooming in and out to... So right now, yeah. as this product sits on your table, yeah. it does not have anam anamorphic zoom. Right. Um, within the next two weeks, let's say three weeks, just to be really safe, yeah. right. um, there's a firmware update coming for the product, which is uh, going to allow you to put a USB stick in the back of it mm. and have that feature built in. Okay, so that's the anamorphic stretch that you could use with a lens. Correct. But this doesn't have the auto zoom. No, so, so no zoom in functionality. And look, there's a couple of reasons behind doing that. Obviously, the price point, and I hope you don't mind me mentioning, the mm. price point of this product at $3,999 yep. doesn't lend itself to having something like that mm. in this space. Um, obviously, as the, the price of the projector goes <coughs> up, if you went up to $9,000, $12,000, mm. you'd probably get that functionality. Yeah. Um, what, we're, uh, what we're suggesting is that with a, a less expensive anamorphic lens in front of it, going into the anamorphic mode, you get exactly the same image but you actually a true anamorphic mm. or cinemascope or 235 or whatever you want to call it um, and you don't lose any of the pixels mm. and you get a much, much brighter image by doing it properly mm. than doing it just by zooming the lens in. Awesome. Yeah. Um, any questions, Enzo? No, look, I'm excited by it. I think this is a game changer um, and uh, let's uh, let's start playing with it. All right. I think what, one, of the, one of my intentions here is that this also gives you an option. Um, if you look at it buying a high-end projector and then you want to add something like a Lumigen Radiance Pro or you want to add an anamorphic lens, you're looking at probably close to thirty or forty thousand dollars. But if you want to add something like a Lumigen Radiance Pro to this, so you get all of the advantages of what we call a LUT calibration, we can talk about that later, and also you get their nonlinear stretch and a few other features, that would really turn this into something very special. And then of course you could add an anamorphic lens, and all of that would be for under twenty K. So we're talking about really, you know, hot rodding this unit yep. and and giving you something that, that could be incredibly capable. So, look, we've got the calibration coming up. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having awesome. me. And <laughs> being here for your first time, Bob, oh, no. how's that? It's only taken two months, but I'm there. Very, very <laughs> privileged. And uh, he's, he's flown all the way over from the other side of Australia, which is a long way for those of you who don't know Australia. <laughs> um, but that's terrific. Um, awesome. All done. Let's have a play. Thanks, folks. Thanks, guys. Okay, so straight after we um, finished that meeting, I ran into a very quick uh, calibration. Uh, this was very fast and dirty, so uh, it, it took less than 30 minutes. Um, this is uh, Rex or BT709 uh, color space. Uh, what you're looking at here uh, initially are the um, the CMS um, uh, 
results that we got and considering that almost no effort was put into this I very quickly um, pulled this result out. Uh, we've got an average delta E of 1.1 and a maximum delta E of 1.9 and um, you know that that's pretty amazing considering um, and if you have a close look at the um, the placement of those colors the color engines working really really well often you'll get your primaries and secondaries in the right place but then when you look at the distribution of colors within the color gamut from 20 40 60 and 80 percent they're not sitting in the boxes which means that your, your internal colors are, are not correct um, with this to be quite honest, um, the results I got are very, very similar to what you get out of a light calibration. They were just so bang on. And so that's pretty impressive. The only thing I found was on the uh, magenta, there was, there was a, a, ch a sort of a curve in the hue. And so if I pulled the 100% into place, then the 20, 40, 60, 80 was out of line. So I had to find a compromise there. And I've already spoken to BenQ about this. Um, and uh, I'm sure that they'll, they'll, they'll find out what's going on there. Um, it would be interesting to see if, um, if uh, HDTV um, test uh, comes up. You know, I'm Vincent's uh, a, a whiz with the calibration, so it'd be interesting to see what results he gets, uh, given the fact that it was, this was a down and dirty calibration. But uh, um, I'm always keen to have a look at his results as well. Okay, so the, uh, the next result was what we call the colour checker and generally if we expect the CMS results to be great, the colour checker is great too. And that was pretty much the case. Again, the colours are very, very, you know, bang on and I'm um, certainly happy with the result. The final window here is the post calibration view. Now again, um, I, you know, I did this in a hurry. Um, I changed the uh, luminance or gamma to uh, 2.4. We have a completely blacked out room and I like to get that depth in the, in, you know, the, that perception of depth which, which uh, you know, the 2.4 gamma produces. Um, and, you know, look at the RGB line. I mean, yes, I'm sure if I'd had more time on it, I probably could have tied that in, but given this was done in a screaming hurry, um, you know, that's great. And the gamma luminance, uh, the error there is, um, you know, is fantastic as well. So look, I hope you enjoy those as results. Um, finally, I guess the only thing I can say is the picture. We, uh, we got this projector fired up and, um, you know, uh, we were watching Blade Runner 2049 and we just come from a JVC, we're watching a 7000 series JVC and we put the picture up and all of us just sat back and went, oh, wow. And, and um, after I ran the calibration, um, we put in a Blu-ray um, and uh, that was equally spectacular. I believe we put the Revenant on and we're both sitting there going, I actually can't believe this is Blu-ray. It was really, really good. Great depth, great definition, gr great color. Um, and, and, you know, for a DLP unit, the blacks were impressive. You know, we, we got a real sense of detail and shade. I, I like this unit, you know. Um, yes, is it perfect? No, but for the money you spend, to get a 4K projector that can do what this can do, you know, even if you only watch Blu-rays, this thing is an absolute smash. Um, if you're going to 4K, we've got a bit of work to do. I still have yet to have time to run a uh, 4K calibration on this, so it'll be interesting to see how that comes out. But look, thank you for listening, thank you for joining in, and uh, please, um, if you're looking to get a great projector, contact us. Uh, the links are below. They're available uh, from us, and um, you know, you'll get all of the service support that you always get from Home Theatre Engineering.